Okay, take two. This problem here is uh, Luke Skywalker flying to uh, in the final scene of the first Death Star movie, or sorry, first Star Wars movie. He's got to destroy the Death Star. Um, I think I've cut off the right side of the question here, but whatever. Um, so he's got to hit the thermal exhaust port down here with his proton torpedoes. It's only two meters tall. General Dodonna told us that in the briefing. And so what happens is he fires the torpedoes and they travel in projectile motion, okay? So they're going to be traveling horizontally and also falling at the same time. Uh, the part that might be a little tricky uh, for you, depending on what year this is, is this 160 meters per second is Luke's speed going forward. And then the torpedoes launch at 250, sorry, 240 meters per second straight forward relative to Luke. What that means is that Luke is going at 160 and these, two, these torpedoes come out going 240 meters per second faster than Luke, really. Um, another way to look at it, instead of Luke moving, is uh, say Luke is still here. Okay, here's, here's the perspective for Luke. Is Here's his fighter. He's still. The trench surface down here, I don't know why this is moving so slowly or so irregularly, sorry. Uh, the trench surface down here is moving beneath him at a speed of 160 meters per second that way. And then when Luke shoots the torpedoes out, they go at 240 meters per second this way. So the total speed of the torpedoes relative to the trench floor is actually 400 uh, meters per second. So I'm going to draw the torpedoes here starting at initial velocity in the x direction. Come on. This thing is, OK, um, of 400 meters per second. OK, and their initial y velocity um, is 0, v not y equals 0. So they go this way, and then they fall through some height difference and go horizontally. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say delta x is how far the torpedoes go, and horizontally, and delta y is how far they fall. So this isn't actually very hard once you realize how to think of it. Um, the acceleration is downward at 10 meters per second. So that's going to be negative, sorry, negative g, okay, because that's gravity on the Death Star. So, uh, so we apply uh, the third, sorry, the second cake equation, which is that your, uh, so we do it in y first, your displacement in y is going to be your initial y velocity times time, but that's zero, right? So it's just going to be uh, the one half a t squared term is what's left. So you get minus one half g t squared, and so from that you can find the time that the torpedoes take to fall down far enough to get into the exhaust port. Uh, so let's see. So there, you know, we just solved this for t, right? Uh, so t is going to equal, let's see. Uh, 2 delta y, and that's going to be divided by g, and it's actually being negative, and then take the square root of all that. Now, the reason why this is going to work is because our delta y is negative, right? We're starting here, or the torpedoes are starting up here, and they're falling this way. I'm assuming, of course, that we're using the standard x and y, but I really should write that out, shouldn't I? So, um, for for them to hit uh, the top, sort of the top of the port, um, that's going to be a delta y of negative 8 meters. To turn into the bottom, it's going to be a delta y of negative 10 meters. So to find the answer to part A, we need to start with delta y equals negative 10 meters. So here's A, delta y equals negative 10 meters. And then you can plug that in. And with uh, g equals 10.0 meters per second, you get uh, t is going to equal the square root of, let's see, so that's negative 2 times the negative 10 here, meters, right? So you're going to get 20 meters on top divided by g for the Death Star, which is 10 meters per second squared. And what this is going to give you, it's going to be the square root of 2 seconds squared. And the square root of 2 is 1.41, give or take, 1.414. And the square root of second squared is four seconds, so 1.414 seconds. 
Okay, so that's the time for part A, and then to find how far they go horizontally, we just take um, their horizontal velocity. Um, so I'm going to say just that's equal to vx times t, with the understanding that vx is constant. In fact, it's the same as that v naught x. Okay, so uh, that's going to then equal uh, 400 meters per second times our 1.414 more seconds, and so that's going to give us um, a delta x. Sorry, there we go. Delta x of uh, let's see, 1.4 times 400, so 564, five, probably five, close to 566 meters. Okay, so that's part A. Good lord, why is that thing going so slowly? All right, um, I'm wondering, what's this computer doing? All right, so that's part A. For part B now, uh, we want to know how much time it takes, or how much time does Luke have to fire the torpedoes and still hit the port? So what we found in part A was if he um, drops the torpedoes, or if he lets the torpedoes go, um, when it will take them 1.414 seconds to reach the exhaust port, so he shoots the torpedoes forward. They're going to take 1.414 seconds to cross this distance. And in that time, they're going to fall right to the bottom of the trench. So this is sort of the earliest he can fire and have them not hit the bottom of the trench uh, before they get to the exhaust port. So if he'd fired them any earlier than this, he would fire them from here, then they would have come down and splatted and exploded against the surface like uh, Red Leaders did. Okay. Um, now, if Luke fires a bit later, instead of them hitting the bottom of the trench, they're going to hit the top of the trench. So how do we find what later time he can fire at to hit the bottom of the trench, or say hit the top? So we want to find this time, the time for Luke to fire here for this, sorry, we've already got the one for him to fire here, okay? And so this here is where delta y is negative 8 meters. So we just redo this with delta y equal to negative 8 meters. Come on, eight. I don't understand what's wrong. Okay, I wonder if there's some if like the web browser is sucking up a bunch of CPU cycles. Whatever. Um, so we take this same equation here, right? This one, and we just plug in negative eight uh, instead of negative ten. So we're gonna get t equals square root of, and this is gonna be negative two times negative eight meters. So it's gonna be sixteen meters divided by uh, 10 meters per second squared, and so that's going to give us the square root of 1.6. The meters here cancel, and this becomes second squared for the numerator. So what's the square root of 1.6? Um, well, sorry, i got to use the other computer here. To, oh, yes, I've got a massive desktop computer. Not really massive, but it's a big thing, and I'm using that to run a Google and check on the square root of 1.6 uh, technology. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 1.265 seconds. So this is 1.265 seconds. So the difference between this time and this time is how much time Luke has to hit the, to hit the button and have the torpedoes fall somewhere in between these two points. So we can get for part B we can get uh, delta t equals uh, this time, so 1.414 seconds, seconds minus 1.265 seconds. So now delta t is going to be um, 959, no, 49. Is that right? Yeah, 49, uh, this looks like 0 0.149 seconds, which is also 149 milliseconds. So that's how precise Luke has to be if he wants to fire them by hand. Uh, and it's pretty hard to, you know, time hitting a button within a 149 millisecond window, especially when you have to figure out, um, you know, exactly when to do it so that you get it into here. So that's why they had targeting computers in the X-Wing, and I guess that's uh, 
the targeting computers here, and that's why it was so impressive, or supposed to be so impressive, it's a movie, right? It's fictional. But it was impressive, supposed to be impressive, that Luke uh, was able to do it by hand using the Force. So that's how awesome the Force is, I guess. Uh, it lets you hit two meter high targets that you have to hit a button at 149 millisecond or within 149 millisecond window. Of course, I just made up some of these numbers, so eh, who knows. Anyway, there you go. That's problem two, more than you ever wanted to know about that scene in Star Wars.